brilliant. Yeah. 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 Take a picture, Ren. Yeah, I will. Oh. On the door shut for the photo. Um, has he woke up? Yeah. That engine. Yeah. <laughs> That's absolutely brilliant.
Oh, good. Then other people can fill in if necessary. Thank you. See if they want to put a berry on the coffin. Well, yes, well, when, when you do that, when it arrives and then it goes in with it. Yes. Right. And the wreath? That's for after. Right, where are you going to leave that? On the... Just so that I know what happens. I don't... I understand that you're going to do these things and that is no problem at all, but I just need to know what's happening. <laughs> So I think there should be enough seats for you all and there should be service sheets on those pews for you. Okay. Is that all right? That's absolutely grand. I, I just need to have it straight in my mind. I, I, to be quite honest, the family hadn't indicated that it would be quite there would be quite so many people. I don't think they <laughs> They passed. probably didn't didn't aware of that. No, I don't think they did.
The church is extremely full, so if I could just say to you as family, I've got to try and get you very close all up together into three rows. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. And then there's some of the seating down for the old guy from the uh, Legion over there.
like to follow behind, please. Thank you. Thank you, John. to carry on please over there because we've got a fair, fair few of you to get seated. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And then if you start a new row accordingly please.
you please sit down? Good afternoon and welcome to you all to this lovely little church which has, is doing its best to accommodate all Derek's friends and relations and his past comrades. Um, it is lovely to see you all. Um, we even have representatives from Africa where he spent some of his time. So it is a wonderful gathering in memory of Derek George Grubb. And I do really welcome you most warmly to this service. I think, um, I rather think that Derek somewhere will be having a wry smile and probably a bit of a laugh as I really don't think we were quite expecting, were we, Jackie? Um, the number of people and the number of wonderful uh, service people and those who support the Royal British Legion, for one thing, among us. It says a great deal about the man. And um, I think we'll hear some lovely things about him, some interesting things about his life as one tends to at a funeral. So we are here to remember Derek, but of course not only to remember him, but to mourn his death, because obviously he's going to be greatly missed. And we also want to be able to celebrate his life, because obviously again he had a lot going on in his life over the years. And I'm sure we're all going to learn quite a bit. And while there might be sadness and tears, I'm sure there will be, I think there will too be plenty of smiles and I hope a little bit of laughter um, because that too was Derek. He always had a cheery smile for you when you met him and he always laughed, and he was willing, too, to laugh at himself, as well as a joke. And thank you for being here for the family, too, because that is very important, because they feel your support, they feel your love, that love you had for Derek, and the respect, too. And for that reason, I would love to encourage you to come to the Talbot after the service and join the family there and share your stories with them because that too is part of their journey through this time of their grief at Derek's loss. Towards the end of our service, we commend Derek into the hands of Almighty God. And then we will move outside and at the gate, we will do the committal. Derek's body will be cremated later, um, but we're going to do the actual words that commit him, his body, to that um, from the gate. And then the hearse, in all its glory, will drive off. So as we gather in this holy place, we are in the presence of Almighty God. And we come before him and remember the words of his son, Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And in the Bible, there are many words of comfort. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from heaven will break upon us 
to shine on those who live in darkness under the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. And Paul writes, things beyond our seeing, things beyond our hearing, things beyond our imagining have all been prepared by God for those who love him. And so we pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, you love us with an everlasting love and are able to turn the shadow of death into the morning. In the silence of this hour, speak to us of eternal things that through patience and comfort of the scriptures, we may have hope and be lifted above our darkness and distress into the light and peace of your presence. Heavenly Father, you have not made us for darkness and death, but for life with you forever. Without you, we have nothing to hope for. With you, we have nothing to fear. Speak to us now your words of eternal life. Lift us from anxiety and sadness to the light and peace of your presence and set the glory of your love before us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're now going to stand and sing our first hymn. Um, I think, if I remember rightly, Derek chose the hymns, did he, or did you? Yes, Derek <coughs> chose his music. The day thou gave us, Lord, is ended. Please stand. <laughs>
sit down as Chris is going to come and speak about Derek out of his area of knowledge of Derek and then um, there will be a poem read by Wendy. I hope you can all hear me. Ian Tipper and I interviewed Derek about his railway career twice in 2017. The second time we were uh, rewarded by being serenaded out by him singing a country song, playing his guitar. Uh, he left Christopher White at school to work on the railway as a cleaner in 1952. And he says, I lived at Woodland Cottage and cycled to work back and forth. He was the brass boy using brick dust and paraffin to produce a shine and said that we had them engines looking smart in the 1950s. For a time he worked in the foreman's office with hours of 6am to 2pm or 2pm to 10pm as a call boy delivering advice notes to rare women's homes which was a hard job for Derek as the office bike was a sit-up and bed model uh, with a single gear and living in the country, he did not know Worcester streets as well as the other lads who lived around the town. When he became a past cleaner, he went into the shunting link, working with older drivers nearing retirement, which he said was enjoyable. Uh, lots of stories came to mind, uh, one which involved Dick Smith, who owned an alley Valisette, uh, a water-cooled motorcycle used a lot by police forces around the country at that time. Now, uh, uh, if you know a 200cc Velocet, it was a water cord, it was ever so quiet. Now, uh, Dick was a betting man, so he fancied just going to the races. So he went to the Cheltenham Gold Cup races on his motorcycle. When he got to the entrance, it cost, he thought too much he could, uh, to park his motorbike, so he went over the, into the field next door, opened the gate, put the uh, motorcycle in the hedge and just left it there. Went into the, uh, the races, lost a packet unfortunately all afternoon. So he came out with a, uh, he was already in a bad mood. So when he got, um, when he got back to his bicycle, uh, his motorbike, he, he was in a worse mood because the uh, cows had eaten his saddle. He was in a saddle. And besides that, the horsehair padding as well, that went as well. So he came back on the springs, as it were. Uh, Derek became a fireman working through the links to the top link for freight. Uh, in 1954, he was called up for his two years national service. He joined the parachute regiment, uh, did 45 parachute jumps, and got involved in practical work with some Bailey Bridge building. Back on the railway in the 1960s, he worked alongside uh, driver Harold Nunes for a long time. Uh, he, he says one of our jobs for a week would be to work the 3.15 p.m. passenger to Oxford, uh, then come back with a Swindon to Oxley freight train. Uh, one day, a Worcester control man said the next day's return trip would not be running, so they could travel back on the cushions. So we went to Oxford then with our best clothes. Underneath our overalls, we caught the train to London, went to the Windmill Theatre, saw the show, then caught the 11.15 p.m. train back at night. Booked off when we got back to Worcester and got paid for the lot. <laughs> what a day we had, he says. Favourite drivers included Bill Ewers, who would like to try and frighten you. He used to come down Honeybourne Bank at a pace, but I used to walk over to his side look at the speedo and motion for him to get her off the clock. On the diesels, he was a bit dangerous. He used to drop off to sleep. You had to watch him because he was one of those people who would drop off to sleep in the middle of a conversation. One time we were coming back from London on a high neck diesel. Everything was hunky-dory, coffee on a, in a warm cab, sheer bliss. When we reached Oxford, there's a steam engine on the middle road. These blokes on the station said, we've got to have your diesel off, mate. They were renewing a bridge at Flabbury, and they didn't want this diesel parked at Worcester all weekend, as they could use it. Um, they could use it getting the miles in on this side of the blockage. A diesel could be used for something like 20 or 22 hours a day, 
So they wanted us off in exchange for this manor or Grange class engine stuck in the middle road. Uh, we didn't have much choice, so we took her over and backed onto the coaches. The tender was full of these eggs, and Bill said, what do you reckon? I said, we can only do our best. Anyway, away we go. A charbly, I dropped the water scoop. It was stiff. I got it down, but I couldn't get it back up. It hadn't been used for ages, so the water had overflowed and came right across the footplate. Bill sat upon the seat, feet on the cocks. It took me until going down Camden Bank to clear these eggs and water. We rattled down there with what seemed like 120 miles an hour. It wasn't, but it sure felt like it. Bill took his watch out and both hands were down at the bottom at half past six. They probably stuck there forever after. My goodness, that was a rough ride on that thing. In 1971, this offer came in for Derek, Brian Pugh, and uh, Ted Finch to work abroad in Liberia. So, with, uh, so from uh, 1971 until 1985, Derek worked as a driver hauling trains of 3,000 tons of iron ore from Bong Mine to the nearest seaport, making three trips a day. In 1985, he came back home to train as a signalman working at the Leinster, Ludlow, Wooferton and Henrik signal boxes. He says, I enjoyed every minute of working on the railway in this country and in Liberia. It was a good job. I liked it. In the 2000s came retirement. Uh, when I started to organise an annual 85A Railway Mons reunion, Derek came along and attended every event from the first one in 2008. Uh, chatting to him a few years ago, he said he went to a vintage motorcycle meeting at the Bell Pub in Broadheath. Uh, when a speaker did not turn up, he offered to give them a talk based on his life experiences, and by all accounts brought the house down with his tuneless tales of life in Liberia and in England. So I asked him if he would like to come and give us a talk to the Worcester Locomotive Society. Uh, and yes, he would, but he would have to start at the beginning. Uh, fair enough, so we made plans. Uh, with Derek loaning me a huge pile of railway photographs for me to scan, which then had to be put in date order. 190 images later and on with 15 pages of interview material, we set up a date for him to come along and give us an illustrated talk. Uh, that was in 2019. COVID present, uh, prevented that first date happening. Another date was fixed up, and fortunately, had four, which covered that. So March the 7th, 2023, was chosen. Third time lucky, but Derek was hospitalised very poorly, and is it, as he said, not in aim one condition, but please carry on anyway. So reluctantly, I substituted for Derek in telling his life story on March the 7th. I finished at 9.45 p.m. Uh, Jackie told me 15 minutes later, Derek died at 10 p.m. It was almost as though he lasted long enough to hear the applause and laughter that his life story generated. I visited him him on his last day when he was in a four bedside ward. I had only been there a few minutes when two auxiliary nurses came to attend to him. They pulled the curtains around for privacy while I waited by the door. In the hallway, patients were in their trolley beds waiting to be seen. It's, it was quite something I couldn't go out to, to the hall, so I stood by the door. Uh, another nurse brought in a chair for me, but it's in uh, NHS, certainly is in crisis. The two nurses w went about their work with sympathy and understanding, talked into Derek in the most compassionate way. I thanked them for their dedication, but found it was too emotional to get the words out. And when they are there on the front line, these workers deserve huge respect for what they do. Derek had been served with a vegetable pie lunch, but he didn't want any of that. He had his eye on the jelly and he soon polished that off. 
And Derek was a kind and generous man, always in a good mood, always concentrating on the positives while letting other people worry about the negatives. Then his mind would wander and come up with a fascinating story from the past. If ever you wanted to be um, uh, marooned on a desert island, I think Derek would be on the top list of the men you want to be your companion. He never lost his sense of humour. One in hospital, he did remark on being woken up at 7am, which made it a blooming long day. On that last day, he did say he never felt so rough in all his years. So there we are. Uh, another good old boy passed on. Another legend to remember. Cheerio. It was so good to have known you. there are a great many other stories from Africa, from his time um, doing his national service and, and so on, but um, those will have to be for the family and people who meet together after this service down at the Talbot. For my own, um, from my own knowledge of Derek, I knew him very casually for several years. Um, because he was Des's brother, and Des always used to, or used to from time to time, play the organ for us at various services. But I always found him very kind and, and very nice, very pleasant. But when I became chaplain of the Royal British Legion um, in the night, night week branch, um, I saw a different side to Derek. Um, he was chairman at the time, and I went away from my first meeting with my side splitting practically because he was so amusing during that time. And I think I went home and said to my husband, well, I think I've just come from the set of Vicar of Dibley uh, because the meeting was really so funny. He would sit there and he'd say, well, you'll have to speak up because I'm deaf because I haven't got my hearing aids and I can't really see what's in front of me because I'm still waiting to have my cataracts done. But we did get through the meeting and it was all all right. He was very um, serious, if you like, about the business uh, that was being conducted at the British Legion and very faithful to the British Legion. Um, but it was just Derek and the way he presented things. Because the next time I met him for a, a reasonable chat was when we were preparing the service for his brother Desmond. And again, he just sat there and he had all of us laughing because he was so funny as he talked about him. And I was busy trying to scribble notes, but try as I might, I could not persuade him to give the eulogy, so I had to be second best on that occasion. Um, yes, so um, I think go and talk, go to the Talbot, talk to the person sitting next to you and learn something new about Derek and hear some, some amusing tales and some nice stories. So, Wendy, we have a poem from Wendy. Thank you. Uncle Derek. Our amazing Uncle Derek, what an amazing man he was, always caring, considerate and kind. Uncle Derek was all the good things, all combined. Hearing whistling down the garden path meant an exciting day ahead. The Land Rover on the drive ready. All aboard, jump in, that's what he said. Off to a steam gala or a country show, a train station or a museum. Every day out, a great surprise. Uncle Derek had so much knowledge. Uncle Derek was so wise. Never a trip too small, Uncle Derek thought of it all. A dedicated train driver and railway man, 
in Africa was where his career began. A passion for engines, nothing too big or nothing too small. From steam engines, motorbikes to tractors, Uncle Derek could fix it all. Time would pass and again a whistle down the garden path. A big day out, another Land Rover trip. We couldn't walk this time, all so excited we had to skip. All was wearing a cap, a whistling you would come, a song when you played your banjo. Uncle Derek, we had so much fun. Uncle Derek, time for you to rest. Uncle Derek, you were simply the best. A really nice send off, if you like, for your Uncle Derek. As Wendy has indicated, music was an important part of Derek's life. Uh, he was often to be heard whistling or singing, and this is why we're going to have um, this next piece of music played for us. But perhaps it is just right to add that of course he did as a young man play his guitar in a group of in a quartet i can't remember what they all played but i think there was a squeeze box or uh, an accordion wasn't there and derek on his guitar des doing various things and the singer perhaps was it a double bass, a double bass there we go and he was part of that and they played as a group at uh, various events but this is something that Jackie said he, he was always whistling as he went about the house. Thank you. And a reading, a short reading from the Paul's letter to the Colossians. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Three short verses, but verses which say quite a lot and encourage us 
quite a lot in how we should be with other people. And Derek was a man who wanted harmony. He didn't speak ill of anyone. He was kind, he was generous, he walked away from arguments and tried to keep the peace. And I think that's why Jackie felt these words, these verses, suited him very well. As I say, they came from a letter written by St. Paul to some new Christians in Colossae. He is encouraging them in their newfound trust and belief in Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not quite sure what Derek's thoughts on Christianity were, or what he actually believed, but he certainly displayed those qualities mentioned here. And of course, they're all qualities that reflect God. Whether we acknowledge it or not, we're all of God, of God as creator and maker, source of all being in the universe, made in the image of God, as we read. So those qualities we see in Derek form for me his connection, his connecting point with God. We cannot see God. But in an earlier verse, Paul writes about Jesus as the image of the invisible God. An acknowledgement that we can't see God, but Jesus Christ is that image of God. He is God who walked this earth. And it's in him that we see God. Through Jesus' life, that we can begin to see and experience God himself. And of course, as we approach Easter, we see all those qualities reflected in Christ as he goes willingly to his death for us. On that cross, as he hung there in pain, he asked God to forgive those who have put them there. He shows patience and humility to his captors. He shows kindness and compassion to the one who hangs on a cross beside him. He shows compassion to his mother, now isolated and completely alone. And he commits her to his friend, John one of his disciples. Even in his pain and agony, he has all those qualities and shows them. And underpinning all this, the reason that he does this is love. It's that love which binds all things together and holds all things in harmony. The love of God in Christ, who gave of himself. God gave of himself in Christ. Christ gave of himself upon the cross by going there willingly to set us free. That is the love in which each one of us is held. We are free as Christ's resurrection shows death no longer has a hold on us. Christ's death opens the door to a better place, to a new and everlasting life. It's a door that's open to each and every one of us. In Christ we have a living presence, a friend who is always there for us and in whom we can put our trust and our hope not because he died, but because after death he went through death and rose again and walked this earth, met his friends again. He is alive. He is alive for each one of us to accept into our whole being, into our hearts. A one on whom we can continually rely. One who 
on whom we can, in whom we can continually put our trust, one to whom we can continually turn <coughs> in distress, in times of worry and concern. Derek has moved on. Derek has died. But as I said, Christ has taken away the fear of death. He's taken away that sense that death is the end. Death is no longer the end of life. The end of earthly life, yes. The end of life, no. We, through our trust in Christ, can move through death to eternal life and live in that eternal life after death. So we pray that Derek now knows that eternal life, that he has moved on through death and now rests in peace in the presence of God Almighty and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And my prayer is that each one of us might be prepared to put our hand in the hand of Christ and allow him to walk with us and to guide us through life, through death, to that new and everlasting life that we too might finally rest in peace. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. And so we move into a time of prayer. God of all grace, we thank you that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to break the power of death and bring life and immortality to light through the Gospel. He shared our life, took upon himself our death, and opened the kingdom of heaven to all. Look not on us, but look on us as found in him, and bring us safely through the judgment to the joy and the peace of your presence. Lord, you hold all souls in life, and we praise you for those who have shared this earthly life with us and have entered into life, eternal life, with you. And we thank you especially today for Derek, for all that made him special, all that you gave him and accomplished in him, and all that he meant to those who knew and loved him. And we do remember especially his easygoing nature, his fun, the ability to make you laugh, his faithful service to his comrades, to the Legion, and his love of music. And now we thank you that for Derek all pain and suffering are ended, that death itself is conquered, Help us to release him into your care and keeping in the confidence that all life finds its fulfillment with you in the joy of your everlasting kingdom. God of all consolation, you pursue us with an untiring love and dispel the shadow of death with the bright dawn of life. Look in mercy on those who mourn at this time. Lead them gently in their grief. And we do remember Jackie and Ken, all Derek's nephews and nieces, and all his friends and comrades, all who cared for him. God of all comfort in the midst of pain, heal us with your love. In the darkness of sorrow, shine upon us as the morning star. Awaken in us the spirit of mercy, that as we feel the pain of others, we may share with them the comfort we receive from you. Bring us at the last with all your people into the kingdom of your glory, where death itself is ended and every tear is wiped from every eye. 
And so we draw these prayers together. As we join in the prayer on your sheet, that prayer which Jesus taught. We say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We have that final hymn which Derek chose, which is Abide With Me. Please stand for that. <laughs> Gracious God, by your power you gave us life, and in your love 
you are giving us new life in Jesus Christ. We entrust Mary to your safe keeping. In the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again to save us and to bring us all to a joyful resurrection and the glory of your eternal kingdom. Amen. Amen. Rest eternal, grant unto him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. O God, you brought us to birth, and in whose arms we died, in our grief and sadness, sustain and comfort us, embrace us in your love, give us hope in our confusion, and grace to let go into new life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face to you and give you
your light in the world as it is, or the world as it shall be. Nothing in all creation that can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus said, because I live, you too will live. We have entrusted our brother Derek to God's mercy and we now commit his mortal remains to be cremated. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ who will transform our frail bodies, that they may be conformed to his glorious body, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever. <laughs> God, though you are unseen, let us see you all around. Though you are silent, let us hear you in the bird song and the trees. Though you are untouchable, let us feel your touch in those who comfort us now. Though you are unknowable, O oh God, let us know your presence with us as we leave here in the mystery of our loss. Amen. Amen. And may the road rise to meet you. May the, the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and those you love, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.
the Altai in general, which is the size of a
Right, I'll see you all there. Okay. Yeah. We took a horse. Yeah. Other ashes and railway ashes. Yeah. I'll see you up there. Yeah. Okay. So then, watch out. All the stuff. Okay. Back a little bit. 